here we go. We are in full outdoor cleaning mode. Barnelly, it's cold out here, but once I get to working, I will warm up. And two, I need to be working in the shade. Any other time, like last year and the years before, I would wait till it got sunny around here because it is cooler in the morning. So I will be removing um, all the rocking chairs, giving them a good wash down. And last year we were gonna paint them. He uses a professional sprayer. So he uh, will be painting these for me and that gets a good smooth and thorough job. But once I wash them down, they'll have to be sanded down and then uh, painted. So I'm gonna be removing the rocking chairs off the porch, the doormat there, and of course you see the stuff that I have up here that I will be working with, the tools I'll need to work with. And the broom, I just use the broom as a scrub brush. So that keeps me from having to get down on my hands and knees on the concrete and scrubbing with a brush. And I have done that for years and it works absolutely marvelous. So you can see the evidence up here while we're having to have all of this broke up and all the uh, bricks on the steps here broke up and removed. Again, that's a 2018 outdoor project and I am looking so forward to getting it repaired, getting it fixed. So it's time for me to get started. I need to pull the hose pipe up here and go find the nozzle. I think we, lo well, we did lose a whole reel of hose pipe. It was on a heavy duty, very durable, um, reel that we had several hose pipes connected with some nozzles and we lost that in the flood last year and we've not replaced it yet so i have to go out and go around to the side and get the nozzle and turn the water on and get started over here and i'll just go ahead and take this camera back inside here because i definitely don't want to be getting it wet when i get going with that hose pipe I can get some kind of wild with it. See you all back in a bit. And it's Friday late afternoon, Friday night, and the furniture still sits there and it will until I get it washed and painted, spray painted. And I do believe these flowers are fixing to start blooming. So I was able to get some pine needles tucked in over here and everything fertilized today except for those three trees and the gazebo over there. And our porch looks so bare not having anything up here. And this is one of my projects that I'm gonna do tomorrow. I want to take everything out of there and clean it out. And I know there's some stuff in there that I need to throw away. And I'm um, thinking we might be doing some rows within the next day or so, back in the garden and dropping seed and looking for plants while we're out to start putting our plants in in the garden. Oh my goodness, did we bust some kind of bote? <laughs> Actually, I've been doing it since, what, Thursday? Or Wednesday, Thursday. Um, Ken spray painted these for me today, so they have a fresh coat of paint. And then we did change out the tiles. We had uh, both of these tiles on hand, but it just brightened it up, and it just makes it feel and look cleaner. I was able to get, um, this, these three trees over here and then the gazebo. I was able to get that done today. And I told Kim we need to think about painting his shed pretty soon. And he said, yes, we do. And he painted up the two bird swings that we put uh, bird food in. So that's what I was able to get done. Let's see, I might can walk around this side of the house with you all to show you the pine needles that I was able to get laid down. It's gonna be time for me to clean in between those again, probably this coming week. 
And is this a Japanese maple not just really showing off its beautiful red colors? To get this stuff done. Thursday and Friday, I believe I worked on it. I'm out here in my pajamas walking down the sidewalk in bare socks. And my hubs will say, did you wear your socks outside? And I'll be like, I did. And of course, he'll say, you need to take them off. And I got all these windows clean. The back window's clean. The porch is washed. Uh, we didn't put the rocking chairs back down because he put those in his shed, his barn. He was thinking he's going to spray paint them, um, in which we may still try that. But they really need to be replaced. They're not that great. We got them from Lowe's, and I would really like to have the rocking chairs that Cracker Barrel has. And we probably need to start bringing them in um, the winter time instead of leaving them out all year. And I was able to not a, a very thorough cleaning, but a cleaning of the light fixtures up there, but a very thorough cleaning of all the windows. And that there is the gazillion monkey grasses that need to be cleaned in between. And I hope those little shrub right there, I hope they perk back up. We still have to do some trimming because that's just last year's yuck that we never got. And I was, I was really trying hard to get this stuff done before we headed out because once we get home and um, with Sophie, I almost called her Bella, I'm gonna want uh, to give her my undivided attention. So I was trying to get this stuff done. So at least the first week I would uh, just be with her until she gets used to her surroundings and used to us because she's coming from a very active home and a whole lot of dogs in the home. I think I counted today they have seven dogs in the house. Oh my goodness. And he also spray painted uh, both of my flag stands. That's not where that one goes, but I did already put, uh, put the one back where it goes over at the gazebo and I fertilized in here and under the um, pine needles there there's a lot of black eyed Susans all of this is going to be covered in black eyed Susans and those are purple cone flowers and then we still have to put uh, the fountain together but I'm sure that will be a weekend project next weekend as well as start uh, dropping seed and putting plants in the garden and these will probably be opening very, very soon. And they put off a lot of those little purple blooms. They're really pretty. And I'll probably need to water this before I leave in the morning because this will dry out quickly or easy. Um, especially when you see how thick these are. I really intended to split these. They could be split several times and still have plenty of um, flowers left in there to bloom so they really need to be split. I did place an order with Kula Bar, C-O-O-L-I-B-A-R, but this is sun protection you wear and I'll show you what those look like. I ordered four shirts, a couple of mediums and a couple of smalls, but I'll show you what they I'll look like. I'll tell you like. what, these shirts when I tried them on, just me just putting them on quickly and taking them off quickly, quickly, they were some kind of awesome feeling having them on. Keep the world safe from sun damage. On it reads, uh, certified UPF 50 plus blocks 98% of UVA, UVB. This one was uh, the women's medium. So this one's the medium and this one is the medium. So these two here are the medium. This, the pink one and this mint colored one. And I'm not usually into stripes, but this looks really, really cute. But it did look really cute. I liked it. I can wear them with khakis, uh, khaki capris. So cute. So tootin' and cute. I really like it. Start living the life you imagine. Yes. Oh, here's where I read it. Recommended Skin Cancer Foundation. Approved by the Melanoma International Foundation. Definitely, these are not sponsored. They have no idea who I am. I paid for these with my own hard-earned dollars, and um, I hope they're gonna be well worth it, because like I said, they are not cheap by no means. This one coral-looking shirt here, it has the split on the side. 
So that's the only one that has the split on the side there, down toward your rear end. And that's on both sides there. Just opens up right there. And it reads the same thing the other one did. So there you have it. There's the four shirts that I have gotten. I love the feel of them. For me, my experience of trying these four different ones on, the small seems to fit me better than the mediums and the smalls are not like real tight and hugging around my chest like some smalls can be. I didn't find that to be the case with these two smalls. So that's the route I'm probably gonna go when ordering um, more shirts through this company. We've had turkeys in and out of the yard all weekend. There's two out there right now. Yesterday it was two male turkeys. That may be some males, because one of them looks pretty big, right there behind that red tray. The rug is wet. We definitely got a lot of rain over the weekend. Saturday was nice and Friday was nice. There's actually three because there's one up in the woods there. And that's the male up in the woods because he is trying to strut his stuff. He is coming toward me. It is fun watching them. They heard the blinds right here hit the door and they ran off when I was trying to come back in because I was trying to get my socks off before stepping in the door. I'm gonna have to, um, well, first I'm gonna wait for it to stop raining. And then I'm gonna have to pull this rug back off the porch and just let it um, lay there over the steps and it will cause the water just to drip on down the steps. And then when the sun comes out, the sun will dry it up for me because it is some kind of soaking wet under there. And I'd like to walk down and see if the creek and the river are up since we did get almost, what, two days of rain. Look how green everything has gotten Actually, for me, just it seems like over the past day or two days for us. They're out there talking to each other down there. Gobble, gobble, gobble. But it's starting to top. It's come over the bank. And we always hope that it does not take our little red bridge that's been through two floods thus far. But see how close it's getting up to the um, bridge there. And it has come up over the bridge. So that's where it's at right now. It's not rushing through here quite as fast as we have seen it before. But when it tops here, it will come up into the yard up under his shed and it will definitely go up under where the little yellow cottage is. We had hoped to get it up another couple of, of the blocks high so the water would just go under it. But here we are. And it's not up on a couple of blocks but we do have a rope around it that if it gets up that high we hope that we can pull it on to dry land. So, we will be on flood watch duty tonight. He is already starting to pull his trailers out. And when it took the cottage off right here before, the water had gotten completely up over the floor there of the deck and into the cottage. 
and took it off. And this is where the cottage used to sit. Mm-hmm. And it came out to this point because somebody wrote me a love note in one of the uh, blocks there that he had poured. I love Lisa. <sighs> and it has gotten so high that it takes our burn pile off. And I know some people may be like, oh, well that's great, that's awesome for you all. Nah, because there's always the risk of what comes around goes around. We may end up with somebody else's burn pile. And we don't want to block anything up down there. We didn't know if we was gonna be home Sunday afternoon. This is why we didn't burn over the weekend. We didn't want to start a fire and not be around it. There might be a snake over there bobbing. Or just a stick. Yeah, it's just a stick. What is just a rolling? And you have to be careful right in here because the ground does break away when it gets to flooding. Because believe it or not, there used to be more ground we could walk out on. And our last flood, it really took quite a bit of the ground there. And it's still kind of weak right in there. So even though it's not pouring down right here, if it's pouring down upstream, that causes it all to flood too. Oh, Joey, not, 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 not. What is that time of year? See all the debris? like it's topping quite a bit behind me. So I might want to get back across over yonder. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fixing the top right there. Come up over the bank. It's just crazy everywhere we could have put the cottage and we put it right in <sighs> where it all comes out. All right, I'm gonna have to walk a little further up to be able to cross, and I better get my rear end across before I can't get across <laughs> without getting water up in my boots, that is. And I don't want to do that.
you get both of them pulled out? Did you get both of your trailers pulled out? Uh, you're not going to worry about the other trailer? Just if it floods off. You don't think the water will take it? Really? I wonder if we need to get that since it's not sunk in. The seat, the bench. We need to get that because it's not sunk in like it used to be. But that's just topped right there in just the time I was over there. I know, I was afraid I was afraid I'd get water in my boots. I could see it was coming up the here and then I thought, where is she? And then I saw her, saw you down here and I thought, that thing's going to be a complete river before she gets there. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think it was topping fast, but it's rushing more right now. Yeah, it's probably going to keep coming up before it goes down even to rain stuff. Yeah, so I said if it's raining up further, even though it may not be raining here, if it's raining up further, up river, yep. it doesn't help us out. And it is, see where it is on the bridge there? Yep. Right. We get our big sitting on. I know. Look at that alligator. <laughs> it's not really an alligator, it's a stick. We don't got no alligators. <clears throat> My grandson just informed me last year we do have rattlesnakes. I'm like, no we don't. He's like, oh, uh, yes we do. Or yes you do in Tennessee. And he called them something. And I asked our son, do we have rattlesnakes? He's like, oh, yes we do. And he called them the same thing. I was like, I had no idea that we had them here in the area we live in. I knew we uh, there were some in Columbia, Tennessee, because my sister and her husband and two of their kiddos, they had uh, more kiddos, but they lived in Columbia, Tennessee, and they did have rattlesnakes. Because I have walked past one when I heard it rattling, and my sister was like, uh, you need to walk slowly to this side of the road. Yeah. But that's why the bridge is so limpy. <laughs> why it's swaying down, uh, sloping down there and mucky. That's from our last flood. And that's why those two pieces of wood are there. Hopefully it doesn't take it off. My man put a lot of work, sweat and tears into building that for me so I could cross the creek to get to the other side to run, walk, walk, run, jog and get to the other bridge as well. I mean, he literally held that up on his back. Or on his shoulder, I should say, while bolting some stuff down. You're not walking across that bridge right now. No. So says me. Mm -mm. You can drive over there. I don't know if it would help. That's what I mean. I don't know if it would help. If you don't get to flowing any more than this, yeah, it, seems like it's it does. So I think this is where I'm going to close this video, call it a wrap. I've uh, shared a wee bit of this and a wee bit of that and a little of this and a lot of that of my goings on in the past several days. I hope you enjoy. I appreciate you all coming along and hanging out with me. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like button? Leave a comment if below. If you have not already, I would ask that you would hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. That way you will be notified when I upload a video and you won't miss any of the 
fun and the craziness that's going on here in k &L's Wild Kingdom. So until we meet again, you all take good care and bye-bye.